Have you ever wondered on how to get decent atmospheric lighting on your layout? Well, let me show you how I did this. Hi, welcome back to Chatting Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And this time I thought we'd take a little look at loco shed lighting. Now, this is my old Backman four lane loco shed. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not going to use it on this layout. I've kind of moved on from it. It didn't really fit in and it is a bit of a monster. But back in the early days when I first wired this up, I used strips of LEDs. So if I just flip this up, I'll show you how I did it on the inside. Carefully does it. Now, hopefully you can see these strips and if I just turn the main lights down a moment you can see it's sort of quite agricultural these strips um, which is okay in the loco shed but of course you don't want to be able to see them from the outside because they are kind of in your face but in this uh, particular video it's probably one of many sort of loco shed videos that might cover I'm particularly looking at this Backman refueling point and perhaps the old Nightwing refueling point. And the reason I'm looking at those in particular is because those lights will be visible from the outside. So using these kind of strip LEDs isn't going to be the answer because they are quite sort of, well, they're very bright agriculture and in your face. So let's have a look at our options. Now this is the Backman refuel point and this is a excellent model, do check it out. I bought it from Lord and Butler on the outskirts of Cardiff, an excellent independent model shop that also sell or buys and sells um, used items. So you know if you're fed up with that 47 you want to upgrade it, that's the kind of place to go. You know it's not the, the mainstream model shops because we need to keep our independent ones alive. Right, enough of that. Now so this excellent little model has five sort of strip lights modelled into it and of course they don't work. So I'm thinking well what can I do, what are my options and I also mentioned about the Nightwing um, cheaper alternative let's say. Now I had a word with the two Chrises from West Hill Wagon Works and they do make a strip light pack. Now I want to emphasise this at this early point when you start wiring with LEDs, whoops, when you start wiring with LEDs, they're either 3 volt supply or 12 volt supply. Now, some LEDs are made at 12 volt supply, but most of them are made for 3 volts, so you need to insert a resistor to bring the working voltage down to 3 volts. So you can't go and buy a load of 3 volt LEDs and wire them up to a 12 volt supply because they'll last about a millisecond. Anyway, so. These ones from West Hill Wagon Works, put that to one side, um, what you get is cool white or warm white. Now I must confess I am into the warm white because of my age. This is kind of what was around when I was um, a youngster. <laughs> Long time ago. Right, what do you get in the pack? Well you get eight LEDs because there are two LEDs per fitting and you get the fittings to glue together which gives you four kind of strip lights, not real strip lights, there's two LEDs and hopefully when we put them together they will give the appearance of a neon strip, a baton strip, that's what we're after. So we've got the, the eight LEDs, the pre-wired with resistors so we can wire them straight up to a 12 volt supply if you've got a 12 volt ring, um, glue them together, have a look at them what they look like and then decide what we're going to do with them with our loco sheds. So let's open up the packet and check it out. Now in the packet we have three bits really. There's two 3D printed bits and obviously those LEDs. I'm putting my glasses on. I just want to make sure we're, we've got the right amount. We have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lovely. And we have these two small parts which we need to glue together. Now, it says on the packet here, instructions 
guide available on our website. So it would be foolish not to take a quick look at the website. And here we are. Hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm here to help you assemble your new kit. Rather thoughtful. Eight pre-wired LEDs, we found those. Four white battens, we found those. And four clear tubes. Recommended tools. Blue or black tack. Sharpie point, I think they mean a sharp point or a cocktail stick. Super glue gel base is recommended. I think I've got some. Okay, step one, attach the clear light tube to the white batten. You only need a small amount of glue. So we pop that in there, that seems to make sense. Insert one end into the other end. Rough side facing down and then slot the other one in. Okay, then we go to step two, installing the LEDs and using the black tack to mount it on so it doesn't slide around. Okay and take your time, pop the LEDs in, pop the glue in, perfect time for a cuppa and all that sort of stuff. I, I work with 9 to 15 volts DC power. Okay, let's give it a go. Now the image on the website might seem a bit, bit Mickey Mouse, but if you're not used to doing that, this sort of thing, then it's quite helpful. But what our friend Jeremy didn't mention, of course, which I would like to do first, is actually test the LEDs because there's absolutely no point in assembling it all, gluing it all up and finding it doesn't work. So, yep, that one works and yep, that one works, which makes sort of perfect sense really because you don't want to glue in a DAF LED. So we're good to go with these two. Right, so now we need to strip these bits out of their 3D uh, mounts. Now clearly we need to get these off of their little mounts and um, they normally just come away quite easily. Um, but take your time on these. I might just use a little scalpel to run down there because I wouldn't like to break these. Yeah, they seem to come out okay. Normally with 3D stuff you just sort of bend it and it tears off its mounts but um, I'm always a little bit cautious because it's, uh, it's not that difficult to break these things. So just tease them out, run a little scalpel along the edge. Mind your fingers. Um, if you're a, a young chap doing this, perhaps this is a good time to get your folks to give you a hand because um, scalpels don't really take prisoners. Okay. Next we have the, the piece you have to glue in. Now these are a little bit more fragile, I, by they appear to be. So they come off of that mount there. See if they oh, they just seem to peel apart really. Yeah, that seems the, the easiest way. Right, so the easiest way appears to be break the whole thing off the mount and then hold it down and then run a scalpel blade across the, the the mountings as it were do that again there's three and the last one there so there we have our eight components. Now this is the fiddly bit. So I have some Rocket Max thick uh, Sino glue, super glue, and I've also got a debonding agent. Okay, so hopefully you can see there the ones I'm using. Now these tiny mounts are white, whereas the diffusers are a little more transparent. Now what you have to do is um, add a little drop of super glue onto the center section and then fit the diffuser. In the ends of the mount there is a small hole and I don't actually don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up. It is really that small um, but hopefully if you can't see it it's a case of taking my word for it. There is a small hole at either end um, and the idea is with a diffuser you poke it in the hole, lay it on the super glue, poke it in the other hole, job done. Hence the 
um, debonded because we are running a little bit close here to super glue. Right, little tip, piece of polythene, because if with my, with my super glue, I put a dab of super glue on the polythene, it doesn't go off. So it will stay there, good to go for, I don't know, an hour or so. Now it's worth doing a trial fit before you start adding super glue so you can get the hang of this. So poke it in one end and then you sort of lay it down and poke it in the other. Notice I haven't glued my fingers together here because the glue is still safely on the polythene. Right. There it is. Okay, so now we want to flick it out and glue it in. <laughs> Marvellous, isn't it? Can't get it out now and it's not even glued in. Right, okay, let's try it for real. So a little dab of super glue in the middle. And it did say a small amount, didn't it? So there we are, small amount. Get me a little bit of plastic. My diffuser element, pop it in the hole at the end. Bend it a little. And it should locate in the other end. Like so. Without super gluing my fingers together. That was easier than I thought. Right, just need to repeat that four times, uh, three more times. Now I thought just before we start gluing these in, I would actually show you the difference between the cool white and the warm white. So if you're going to buy some of these, you'd know which is the best to suit your needs. So this, I think, is the warm white. Whereas this is the cool white. So you can see it's more of a, I think it's a, it's an arctic blue sort of tint to it. So the warm white and the cool white. So now you know. And if you can search for some of these, there is a link in the show more tab, which takes you to West Hill Wagon Works. And the thing to, to click then is to search for Batten, because that will take you to these Batten lights. Please use the link in the show more tab. Right, time to glue them in. Now I've dug out my box of blue tack and black tack and if you don't know the difference black tack is black tack is much tackier. There's also a white tack which is less tackier than blue tack. Let's not go there. Right. So there's my little dab of blue tack and I have now the um, baton with the uh, diffuser glued in. Now these LEDs, um, interesting sort of design feature is they are designed to be flat as it were they the led isn't at the end of the wire it's flat on the end if that makes any sense so i should be able to push it into that little groove there and lay it down and it should kind of stay in there and then the the second one once this is dried will go in the opposite direction so they'll both come up into the centre as per this diagram from their website. Now here we are with our um, LED and all I'm going to do is take a drop of super glue and line that sort of pocket I suppose would be the, the best term for it with the super glue. Pop it in there and with another fresh cocktail stick, pop the little LED right into that hole so it beds in and it pushes into place. Now, call me a pessimist, but I'm going to tape it in place to stop it coming out because I know what super glue is like. You sort of turn your back on it and then you walk away and it pops out and it hasn't sort of gone off. So we can leave it there in place. I can put pressure on my finger without getting myself glued up and then we'll come back in a minute or so and check that one's okay and then we'll go on to the rest because I have more super glue. Right, let's get on with the next one. 
So now it's time for the big switch on. Da -da -da -da. Drum roll. And there we have it, our two little LEDs. And as you can see, it's clearly not a neon strip, but it does give you the impression of a wider light source. Pretty good. And so now we've got to figure out where it will go within this building. And that's kind of the major dilemma, really, because if I poke it through this doorway, you can hopefully see that it is reasonably bright and that this building is not going to need... Um, whoops, I just pulled the wire out of the... Oh, no, it's not. It's OK, it's just come out of the connector. Bear with me. Stop or leave. It's only a crop clip. Now the other one's out. Yep, right. Um, so as I was saying, yes, you're not going to need five of these. They are that bright. But hopefully, if I can hold them in place, you can see within the building area how bright they are. And if I turn down my main lights, might give you an impression of exactly how bright they are. I think they're pretty spiffing, but clearly you don't need five in this um, what is it, a DMU kind of refuel area. But they're looking pretty good. If I poke it through the middle and then up there might give you another sort of impression of how much light we've actually got. There we are. Um, so if I turn some lights on and that one off, no, that one off and that one on. Sorry about that. Um, yes, yeah, so when we get back looking at this, this thing here, this little beastie, um, I'm thinking of installing three. So I shall probably go I need a pointer, scalpel. I shall probably go here, here, and here. Because obviously you don't need five of these, or it'll sort of blind you. But you, you can't get away with just one, and two might seem a little odd, so we'll go for three. And of course, if it's too bright, you can always lower the voltage and bring it back down. But I have a confession, Ooh. and that is I have used, whilst you weren't looking, um, super glue activator. When I was putting the second ones on and taping them down, when I put the tape off, it was flying off again. So I um, restuck them, held them down with a um, cocktail stick and sprayed super glue activator. Now, if you've never come across this stuff, it's brilliant. However, it's not without risk um, because it's a, it's a dangerous old commodity. And if I just Read, causes skin irritation, may cause drowsiness or dizziness, suspected of damaging fertility of the unborn child, may cause damage to organs uh, through prolonged or repeated exposure. This is not fun. So it really is a case of just a quick spray and get out and you need to, you ought to wear gloves to stop absorbency um, and use it in a, in a clear area. So if you're gonna do it in your railway room sort of thing, um, you know, if you can mask up, give it a quick spray and then leave and let this stuff dissipate. But in some some you know instances, there's no other way because the super glue just won't seem to go off. Um, I know in the West Hill Wagon Works, it said use a, a thicker glue, which I've got. Um, I use I tried the Gorilla Glue, but in the end, I went back to the um, Rocket. Uh, Max here with the activator and it did it fine. Well, it's did it fine up to now. I haven't fitted them yet. So now what am I going to do? Well, with my sexy little shed, I need to drill three holes and fit three through. And then, of course, I've got all the, the dilemma of the cables are going to come out the back and how am I going to hide those? Well, I suppose we're modelers, aren't we? We'll figure out a way. So let's drill some holes and fit them in and see how we get on. And of course, the other thing is, of course, this really um, will have to be super glued into position as well. So I need to find out how thick the uh, resistor is. It looks kind of about two mil. Um, and drill a two mil hole in, in place. We'll try, try one and then see how we get on. Now, as you can see, I have a date with Mr. Makita. To that one there. Now 
here we are with them in place. They're not glued in, as you can see, they're all a bit wonky, but you can get the general feel of what it looks like. And if I turn the, if I turn the lights down once more, hopefully you get a, a general feel of it. It might be just a little bit too bright, um, but even so, I wouldn't have wanted to reduce the numbers because it sort of is evenly spaced and looks okay. Um, if I find it is too bright, then I'll just lower the deliver the delivery voltage from six volts. Uh, sorry, from twelve volts to say about nine, and see what it looks like then. Um, I've got a little bit of work to do on the back. If I bring these lights back up, um, hopefully you can see I've just lashed them up to a couple of those Wago or Vago connectors. Um, but I've got some work to do on the back here now to bring down these cables um, like so and perhaps put them in a little bit of half moon trunking down the back and then paint them up. So I think it looks pretty nifty. And the same will be said for the Nightwing shed as well because it's just a case of putting one um, centrally. Um, but in this case, I would run the cables down a another um, upright, just a great piece of grey tubing to deliver the, the light above there. I think they're rather spiffing. I'm not going to glue them in with super glue though. I get the feeling that I'm going to use a an impact adhesive behind there. I don't really want to get in there with super glue and um, accelerant. So what I think I shall do next is glue them in place with um, Evo Stick impact adhesive and then take it from there. Well, it's now the following morning and my glue has dried on my uh, LEDs. Um, but I thought it occurred to me last night that I didn't measure and tell you the width of these um, LEDs because that obviously dictates the size of the drill. I sort of gave a quick guess. Well, as you can see, they're around about 2.6 millimetres thick and I used a three millimetre drill in the Makita when I drilled through these, just sort of a matter of interest. I mean, it's a bit of a big hole and there'll be a bit of filler to do, but without cutting these off and um, then re-soldering them, then clearly it's the, the width of this that's going to dictate the size of the hole. Now, I mentioned yesterday evening that I used Evo stick on this first um, light, which I did but it was stringy, so I didn't use any more of that. I then switched to Revel's polystyrene cement, and I used that on the other two, and this takes a lot longer to go off, so I just sort of propped it up with cocktail sticks and left it overnight. Anyway, it all seems good to go, um, though you may still, still consider it's a little bit bright. On the back, as you can see, I need to bung up the holes, and then, as I mentioned, get some trunking um, down the sides and I might even have to drill another three mil hole um, in the base here to hide these cables back underneath this sort of concrete plinth on which it sits. Um, I don't have this sort of plasty, plasty, plast strut I think it's called to go in here at the moment but I think what I will do is disconnect all these cables and root them um, and pop it into place um, and then await um, when I next go to a decent model shop. I also mentioned about the Nightwing um, unit and what I've done here, though it's somewhat <laughs> agricultural, let's say, is I just inserted a piece of um, plastic tubing with the cables running straight through it. And what I would normally do when I build this piece of kit, I would run the, I would replace one of these outer struts with something like this, probably a square section, and run the cables through there. But I thought it was worth putting it in just so I can turn these lights on, so you can see the effect it has on this old Nightwing kit. So what does it look like with the lights off? Well, here we are. Um, and they're quite subtle, really. You can see what they're supposed to be. But I'm left with a dilemma now of these five modelled neon strips because they clearly don't light up. So what am I supposed to do with them? Well, I think it's a case of taking a pair of snips to them, cutting them off, firing them back, smoothing them off, and then just painting where they were. They, I've tried to yank them off, but it's clearly um, super glue and they're not going anywhere. And they're made of, they're made of metal. Um, but anyway, they can go and, um, and we'll put it in situ and see what it looks like with the removal of these dummy lights is actually easier than I thought because you can just simply prise them away. 
and then we'll just keep those for a later project. Beautiful. There we are. Well, I must confess, I do like those lights from West Hill Wagon Works. And if you're after some, then please use the Show More tab down below. Um, click on the link, go through to the West Hill Wagon Works website, and in the in the box, search for Batten. It will take you to those lights. I think they're well worth the investment. In the meantime, I'd like to thank my patrons because they make it all worthwhile. Without their support, I couldn't really do it. And if you want to become one, there's the patrons button. There's the old subscriber button. And remember, subscribing is free and a video here and here. And I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye.